Hey everyone, thanks for watching and welcome back. So, a lot of you all have asked me to make an accident breakdown video in the comments. I know a lot of you guys are saying to yourselves, hey, he's just trying to milk this situation at this point, but I think a video is the best way to actually break everything down so you all see what happened and that way I can answer as many questions as possible. So, here's my best attempt to make a video breakdown of the accident step by step, how it happened and where it happened. Thanks. So the drive started at the Davidsonville Park and Ride off of Route 424 and ended at the intersection just past the overpass over Route 50. A lot of people think that it was a joke in the video description of the accident where I put that it was 420 yards away, but it actually was. The original title said it was 1,000 feet, then I changed it to 100 feet because I was really just guessing. But people were curious why I was guessing, so I decided to measure it out, and sure enough, just by 420 yards. A lot of people were curious why I didn't have him pull over right away when I realized he was driving poorly. But the shoulder that I saw didn't look very promising because I didn't think I would be able to open the door. So I thought the best bet was just to have him make the U-turn, which when done properly is very safe, and head back to the parking lot. In hindsight, besides not letting him drive the car at all, I probably should have pulled the e-brake at the stoplight and told him to switch seats with me. But sadly, hindsight is 2020. So the black line that you're seeing is roughly the angle and path of travel of the driver's side tires. That's what brought my car to this approximate angle and position when the impact occurred. From what I could tell, the motorcyclist was actually pretty far over to the left, and he had every right to be, of course. But since the driver decided to floor it instead of brake when he saw the motorcyclist, it caused the motorcyclist to ricochet off my car at a shallow angle and tumble over the hood. I didn't notice it at first, but apparently we hit the wooden signpost during the turn, which dented in the driver's side front fender quite a bit. All I knew was, if I'm going to restore this car and bring it back to life, it's going to take a lot more work than the last time. So there you have it. I plan to do another video soon where I answer some of the most common questions and comments I've received. But for now, I hope this answers your questions about how the accident happened and helps you to visualize and understand it better. So as always, Thanks for watching, thank you to Patreon supporters, and I'll see you in the next one.